Today, I'm going to be taking a look at the wireless Creality Otter Lite 3D scanner for the purpose of re-engineering things in the RC hobby that are difficult or impossible to measure. It does seem to come with a turntable according to the manual, so there's no need to buy that separately. It comes in a nice carry case. The first thing you'll find is the calibration plate, which I've yet to use as it comes pre-calibrated out of the box. Then we have another bag of stuff that contains a qualified certificate, along with two USB Type-C adapters, which I've not needed to use yet, a cloth to wipe the fingerprints off the scanner, some reflective markers for challenging scans, but I've not needed to use these yet either, which I'll explain later, and you get some manuals. Then in the main part of the case, we have a carry strap, the main grip, which contains the wireless bridge to your computer or phone, and a battery that will last you around three hours of scanning, and the grip has 20 watt charging via USB-C. Then we have some rugged cables if you want to use the scanner wired to your computer. You can actually save a bunch of money if you don't want the wireless function, but having the scanner wireless, in my opinion, is a must for my application. You actually get two wires, the other one is in case your laptop or PC can't provide enough power from a single USB port. For some reason you get a jack screw, I've not found a use for that. And then we have the phone adapter, which I've not been able to make use of because their baseline for this scanner working on a phone is an iPhone 13 or a Samsung S22 Ultra or a Pixel 7 and I've got a Pixel 5. Then we have the scanner itself, which has buttons and lights on the back for various things, such as pausing or stopping the scans or manually adjusting the exposure of the scanning cameras. There are fans in the scanner to keep things cool, but they aren't really loud, but just be aware that they are there and the device isn't completely silent. The grip has a turning wheel to tighten it into the main part of the scanner, but once that's on, the scanner won't freeze stand. Now there is a tripod jack on the underneath of the grip, but no actual tripod is included, so that's something you'll have to purchase separately. However, I have done all of my scans handheld anyway, it's just annoying for when you are not scanning with it. Then we have the model OWL, which has proved to be brilliant for practicing scanning, and I'm really glad they have included it in the package. At first, the cynic in me assumed that this would just be an easy object to scan, but it actually teaches you how to scan. It does have some good things about it, so it's not reflective, but there are areas on the OWL that are difficult to scan because it doesn't have that many features, such as the egg at the bottom. Using my middle of the range 700 quid laptop, I downloaded the Creality Scan software, which at the making of this video doesn't require any login, which is refreshing. I struggled a little bit with the Wi-Fi bridge at first. You have to wait for the blue Wi-Fi LED on the back of the scanner to start flashing before it would show up on my laptop's Wi-Fi, and I had to keep refreshing my Wi-Fi before it picked anything up. And it sometimes does this performance test on your PC or laptop, and sometimes not. As I had OBS running at the time, the PC performance came back poor, but the scans came out great, so that doesn't seem to affect things. But in general, with OBS running, I would only get maybe 5-6 FPS if I was lucky. I did do a scan on my powerful desktop computer, where I could get 30 FPS, with the scanning, but it didn't improve the scans at all. I suppose it just makes the scanning easier, but I didn't really find that. 5 or 6 FPS was actually fine. I tried to calibrate the scanner as it recommended it when I first booted up the application, but unfortunately you can't do that in wireless mode, so you do need that thick cable if you want to calibrate the scanner. And I think that is a shame. Its last calibration was in May, so I decided to skip it for now and everything has been fine. But at some point I imagine it will start having problems with tracking and or scanning, so bear that in mind. You can't start a new project until the scanner is connected and recognised by your device. And for the first scan I set the object type as normal, the size as small, tracking mode as geometry, and I set exclude flat base plate on. 
and that will then discard the black turntable, or try its best to. Then you have to go to the preview window in the software and hold the scanner up to the object you're trying to scan, and we want the object we are scanning to show as green distance wise. I left the exposure as auto and the RGB colour camera set to auto with the built-in LED light turned off. So yes, this has a built-in LED light if you want more accurate colour mapping. Then when you are ready to scan, you hit the play button on the back of the scanner and you can start scanning around the object. You quickly learn that scanning isn't as easy as the tutorials make it look. However, I have to say, I did get a first good result with it. Any areas of the scan that are red in colour need more data points, so just keep scanning until everything is green. The app never told me that the scan was complete and finished. You have to decide that yourself. You can pause the scan and turn the object on its side to scan the underneath. You just have to make sure to restart the scan in a detailed area so that its tracking can pick up where it left off. And this is where you realise an area such as the bottom of the owl model and the back are more tricky for the scanner to track because there is less detail to reference. So when everything went green and was looking good, you long press the play button on the back of the scanner to finish the scan. From this point, you want to clean up bits of the raw scan using the shift and left mouse button, which at first I wasn't very good at doing. It's something that you learn. There are tools such as invert selection, which make this process much faster, but I hadn't discovered it yet or read the instructions properly. And I'm not that great at using a touchpad on the laptop either, which didn't help. There are basically three processes to get a good scanning result. The first is scanning the model itself, making sure that you have got enough point cloud points. In other words, the model is green enough so that you have a decent raw scan. And then you want to clean up that raw scan, so removing anything it scanned that you don't want in your final model. And then you have the option to fuse the model together manually, and then meshing, which has some other options, and then that also has colour mapping within that process if you want to use the model in something other than a 3D print. Now, Creality has a function for beginners, which is a one-click process that fuses your raw scan automatically. It does warn you that you may not end up with the optimum quality scan, but what it does do is give you a first initial successful result, which just like in the FPV world, has always been very important if you want to progress further. I decided to export my first scan as an STL file and 3D print the OWL. Now with an FDM printer, you aren't going to get the kind of detail that you would get with resin prints anyway. But for my use case of reverse engineering and designing things around a 3D scan, all I care about is if the measurement is accurate. Now, while I was happy with the first scan of the OWL using the one-click-does-everything method, I did notice that it had less detail than other tutorials. So I did a second scan of the OWL to gather more data points, and I even used the LED on the scanner this time, but all that gives you is a more linear colour mapping on the model, which I'm not really using. But in the second scan, I was able to manually fuse the owl with greater accuracy than my first scan, and then manually mesh the model, which did give me a much more detailed model comparing to my first scan. However, even when 3D printing the higher detailed model with a 0.08 layer height on my FDM 3D printer, it didn't really result in that much more detail. So bear that in mind if you are buying this to retain detail when 3D printing with an FDM printer, because you don't really get that. Playing about with the OWL did teach me a lot of stuff about scanning, as I mentioned earlier. For example, I was able to scan the car body of an RC drift car that I want to build an interior for. 
and I thought that I might need the markers for this, but I didn't. The body was actually quite dusty from its last outing, and while it struggled slightly with the wheel arches and elements of the rear wing, it actually scanned okay enough for what I wanted. 3D scanners like the Otolite don't scan things well with shiny surfaces or black surfaces because the scanner relies on the light reflecting back into it and black surfaces don't do that very well, it absorbs light and shiny surfaces scatter light. But I can actually use this to my advantage so I could use my turntable which is already black and the car body was dusty enough to not be too reflective. Now I've since learned that you can buy 3D scanning spray if the car body isn't as dusty as this one, but I didn't need to do that. I did try to scan the inside of the car body, but it's painted matte black and it didn't scan very well. So I imagine in this scenario, you would start using some of those little tracking stickers but as a car body is essentially just a mold there's no need to scan the inside i can export the results into mesh mixer which is free and then extrude the body if i want to use it as a template to build around using something free like tinkercad to reverse engineer the shape of the car body into an interior so that everything fits when it 3d prints and talking about whether things will fit once you do this method, another example is that I scanned the cockpit of my pit special with the intention of eventually adding a working LCD cockpit to it like I did with my mall. Now, this one would be easier to measure and draw in CAD than an RC car body, but I thought I would try it as a quick example. So I imported the scan into Mesh Mixer and cut down the part of the canopy that I was interested in, and then imported that into Tinkercad and simply used it to cut a hole into a block which will again allow me to build a custom cockpit around. Which brings me back to only really caring about the geometry accuracy of this scanner because as you can see when I 3D printed the result of that it fits everything perfectly without the need to measure anything manually. So to summarize, I really love 3D scanning and its powerful use cases. Some downsides that I have discovered is that it's not as easy as people make it look. There is a learning curve and a technique to getting good scans. And while I've been using the scanner, each time I've come to it, there seems to be a software update or firmware update for it. Now, you could see that as a good thing that they are constantly improving things, but it did interrupt the learning process each time I went to do a scan. Maybe the next day I had to do an update and things were different than the day before. And at some point, I was asked to create a Wi-Fi password for the wireless bridge from the hand grip to the computer which I didn't manage to catch on a screen record. I believe this is due to some sort of regulation, but I wasn't sure what it was doing at the time, and I chose a password that wasn't easy to remember, and I wanted to reset the Wi-Fi password. So all that was a bit of a pain. You have to reset the device by holding a button down on the back for 15 seconds. So. It just made the process a little less seamless, but I suppose I can understand if it's some kind of silly regulation that they have to abide to. And it is a shame that I wasn't able to use my older phone to do the scans. That's where I think the phone would be useful is in the initial scan, but not so much the processing of a scan. You can export it out to a computer anyways, and that's probably the best workflow. I just need a newer phone to try that out. And there was another phone feature that also didn't work on my Pixel 5, and that is the mirror feature. So you can basically just use your phone as a screen to mirror what your computer is doing, so making the whole wireless thing a lot easier, but that didn't work either, unfortunately. It did show me the distance, but the scanning screen just showed a complete blank just due to the age of my phone and you need a fairly decent pc or laptop to make use of a 3d scanner at all which if you are into cad design you probably have anyway but it's worth bearing in mind if you are considering it
As for the future, I'm looking forward to doing more 3D scanning and completing these projects and unlocking future projects and ideas for the channel. I hope you enjoyed this video and it was useful. Thanks for watching. Cheers.